And now, Mike's Thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages, the NFL has officially become the no-fun league yet again. The NFL is looking into an issue with George Pickens. The NFL is looking into an issue saying that George Pickens did not follow proper uniform policy on the week Sunday night game versus the Dallas Cowboys. George Pickens had some eye black on. And within that eye black, many people have been writing RIP to my pops and putting John 316 and other things on there. George Pickens took it one step further. George Pickens put open fucking always across his eye black. Now, the NFL is looking to find him for the uniform policy rule, uh, uh, basically saying that Rule 5, Section 4, Article 8 states that players are prohibited for wearing or displaying a message unless it has been approved by the NFL office. With that being said, George Pickens, first things first, your choice of words here, they're okay, but you rearranged them in the wrong order. Open fucking always? Come on, man. It should have been it should have said always fucking open. Because that's how you properly say it. Open fucking always. Like, what is this? 7-Eleven? Waffle House? Always F and open, George Pickens. So the NFL should find George Pickens and the Pittsburgh Steelers for basically blatantly doing the same wrong. Like, what are you thinking, George? Open fucking always? Like, come on, dog. You're smarter than that. Well, uh, uh. He does play for the Pittsburgh Steelers. We don't know how smart he actually is, but I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But come on, man. Like, you were going to put effing across your nose when there's millions of kids looking up to you. Like, that's just blade out stupid at the end of the day. Come on, George Pickens. You're better than that. You're better than that Pittsburgh Steelers. Mike Tomlin, you should have nipped that in the butt the minute you saw it. But maybe he's losing the locker room. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Cue that intro. Are you ready for the best damn NFL show on the planet? Man Hour Nation, rise up. Yeah, let's go. Hitting that gridiron, we're going hard, we're running the plays. You know the vibe, only the strong survive. Gotta keep your head in the game. Talking NFL, uncut, straight raw. Steady bringing that sauce. We about to take off. Get it hyped, this man, our sport talk. Yeah, yeah, from the quarterback to the lineman. Everybody bringing heat. You don't really want to try them. Hey, hey, who gon' win? It's a battle of the giants. This show is the flyest. Nobody can deny it. This is Man Hour. Man Sport talk. Man Hour. Sport talk. What team you reppin'? We keep it interesting. Who caught another down? Who got that interception? This is Man Hour. Man Sport talk. Man Hour. Sport talk. What team you reppin'? We keep it interesting. Who caught another down? Let's go! What is up, Man Hour Nation? Michael Buckhouse here with the Man Hour Show to manhourradio.com. Check out the merchandise page or check out the blog section as well. But guys, there's a pinned comment below. If you're listening to us on YouTube, YouTube Shorts, or Facebook, there's a pinned comment. In that comment, it is the Week 6 NFL Pick'ems. With that Week 6 NFL Pick'ems, you can click on the link for your chance to win $2,000. You can be like Laura and win the weekly prize of a hoodie or a jersey or a t-shirt. I believe this week it is a jersey, if I'm not mistaken. But with that being said, we do got a great show for you lined up today. We got a great show for you lined up today. We got Buy or Sell Wednesday here, and we are going to talk about the bias that is the overseas games with the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's right. I said bias. Bias, bias, bias. We're going to talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then, of course, we're going to talk about Deshaun Watson as well. And then the title segment of today's show is who needs this week six win the most? Who needs to make a statement week six? We got, I, I, I got 12 teams that I think need to make a statement. But, guys, that is the question of the day. What team or teams do you think needs this must win six week game? Who needs a win most coming into week six? Before we answer that question, we get carried away. We got to welcome people into the chat. We got Laura Johnson Hedrick in the chat. She says, "Good afternoon, y'all. Good afternoon, as well as uh, Laura. She's on vacation. Is she still tuning into the Man Hour? 
Let's go, Laura. We appreciate you. By the way, Laura's a week five NFL pick em winner. There's a five way tie, and she got the closest score uh, b- for the Raiders and Broncos game. And she also picked the correct winner. So g- give props up to uh, Laura. She is getting a man hour hoodie in the mail. We also got CEO pundit, Mr. John Peebles himself. John is the pig skin pundit. If you guys want to be like John, click on the subscribe button. Pay that membership fee. You get some free merch. You get free entry into the NFL pickums. Bada bing, bada boom. And you get some free streaming NFL games. So John is a Raiders fan, and the Raiders are never on national TV. And he says, Buck, come on, man. Let me see my Raiders get beat by the Denver Broncos. I'm like, I, I got you, dog. I got you. So we go over there to the Discord, and we play whatever game that John wants to see. But he says, what's up? What's up, Wazell? Hope you have a grand old Jade day john grand old day again old day we got kaylee in the chat as well she says good afternoon i saw kaylee i believe was in the pigskin pick em for this week as well she's already got her entries in she was seven wins last week so she was one underneath her mama but hey this week kaylee we got you come on kaylee we got you we got you we got you and then you guys start to talk um, talking about diddy in the chat talking come on now Come on now. Talking Diddy. <laughs> Speaking of Diddy, no Diddy Diddy Diddy. You got Mark D in the chat. Mark's up, Mark. What's up? What's up? What's up? And then uh, John says the Detroit Raiders. Uh, Thomas B- uh, Bile says NHL. It is hockey season. Uh, I do love me some St. Louis Blues. I don't know much about hockey. I just enjoy going to games and actually watching hockey. Uh, actually, my favorite thing to do is watch minor league hockey. Because it seems like every time the third period starts, the gloves drop and there's a fight. And I absolutely love it. Uh, but yeah, hockey season is here. October is the best sports month ever because you got you, like, you got the baseball playoffs. My Royals are playing here tonight at 5 o'clock. They side the series with the Yankees last or Monday night. Uh, we got basketball starting. We got the WNBA happening. Of course, we got football and then hockey. And of course, we got bowling. Like, come on. Come on now. Got Hoffy's in the chat as well today. Hoffy says... Uh, John people sucks just like the Raiders. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. It smells like team spirit, you said. Uh, da, 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 da. You like the blues, says John. Says, I got you. I do like the blues. I mean, basically because I was a Kansas City guy and St. Louis Blues were the closest hockey teams. So I'm like, I don't want to pick the Red Wings because that's my dad's team. Like, nah, that's that's freaking gross. But it is, it is, it is what it is. And Laura says, I stopped watching hockey once the Stars left Minnesota. See, and I didn't even know there was a hockey team in Minnesota, which is kind of weird, right? Because Minnesota is like the hockey capital of the, like of the world, I like I would think. Uh, but I I didn't even know the Stars were in Minnesota. I always thought they were the Dallas Stars. So, so that shows you how much I know about hockey. I, I know very very little about hockey. I just know that you hit it in the net, you score some points, you your offsides and onsides trips getting a popsicle, buddy. Okay, get up. Do you need me to help you open it? But yeah, so guys, like I said, I know very little about hockey. Kids are on fall break still, so they're out here running around like little hood rats at the yard, little cotch groblins, or I say cock blocks. Man, never have kids. I'm, I'm kidding. I love my boys. I love my boys. But guys, let's get into the title segment of today's show. Yeah, buddy. You got red? Okay, be careful. Don't spill it, please. All right, I love you. All right, so let's jump into the title segment of today's show. T- title's segment of today's show is basically who needs this week six statement win? Week six is kind of, of a make or break point of this NFL season, I feel. There are some teams right now that are kind of teetering, right? Their season can go one way or the other. If they lose or get drop down this week they could be a top 10 pick but if they win they can still potentially make the playoffs and make a super bowl run like so this week six is very statemental week for a lot of teams across the nfl lands land landscape and i have 12 teams with six games that i think are going to be statement statuses of the week of the game games we should be watching games that could really catapult to season one way or the other so with that being said the first game that I'm going to uh, be circling and circling and watching is the 49ers versus the Seahawks. Both of these teams need a major statement win. 
This could be a make or break game for both of these teams, right? If the 49ers come out and totally shit the bed, CMC be like, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to save myself for next season. I'm going to think about next season and beyond. And if the Seahawks lose, then you got back-to-back losses after being a quote top team in the in the NFL. So this is a huge statement game for both of these teams. Next up is the Saints versus the Buccaneers. The Saints obviously lost on Monday night to the Kansas City Chiefs, and now they're without Derek Carr for several weeks. It actually hasn't been determined how long he is going to be out. So they need to really bounce back and show that hey. We can kind of right the ship while Derek Carr is away, uh, like, a little bit. Devontae, we still want you to come in. Derek Carr will be back eventually. And then the Buccaneers, fresh off that Falcons loss, a 500-yard performance uh, from Kirk Cousins, they they need a bounce-back win as well. But then we got the Detroit Lions taking on the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys on our two-game winning streak with wins over the Giants and the Steelers. Many people are kind of writing those wins off. Ah, those those. Those teams are not very good. They need a staple win over the Detroit Lions to basically, you know what? We here, baby. We here. And also the Lions need to win as well to keep pace with the 5-0 and Minnesota Vikings. And they also need to rebound from last year. They need to make sure they, they report eligible. They need to report eligible <laughs> and beat the Dallas Cowboys. And, and then we got the Browns versus the Eagles, right? The Eagles are coming off the bye week. They might need this more than any than any of us are logically wrapping around our heads. They need this win bad. And the Browns right now are just a bad team. The Browns right now are just a bad team, sitting at one and four, and that's all I'm going to say about that. (laughs) And then a couple more games here to really circle are the Broncos versus Chargers. Chargers coming off of a bye week. Their last game was a loss to the Kansas City Chiefs. The Denver Broncos are on a three-game winning streak, and it is time for them to put that really staple in this win, get four games in a row and get people believing into the hype, buying into the hype. Then we got the Colts versus Titans, right? Colts are fresh off the first loss to the Jacksonville Jaguars. They need to figure out their quarterback issues. Is it going to be Joe Flacco? Is it going to be Anthony Richardson? They need to figure that out right now. And the Titans, right now, they are one and one and three. They could easily three. They could easily be three or three and one if not four and zero. Oh. I want to see if that bye week really helped Will Levis moving forward, or is he same sling gunslinging quarterback that he thinks he is? And then, the, like in the last game, Steelers versus Raiders. Both teams need to win bad. Steelers have lost two games in a row, opening that quarterback controversy talk that we'll be talking about later. And the Raiders are just a bad team right now. They benched their starting quarterback last week, what, second quarter? Insert Adrian O'Connell, Devontae Adams wants out, losing the locker room is potentially AP. They need a statement win. So out of those seven games, guys, there is one team in particular, or these like, like out of the 12 teams, I think there are there's one team in particular that needs this week the most. Needs to come out and win. They need to come out and really flex on the entire NFL. They need to come out and say, we are here. We are here, and that is the Philadelphia Eagles. Out of those 12 teams that I listed, I think the Philadelphia Eagles guys need this win this weekend the most. Flashback just a few weeks ago. Everybody thought the Eagles were broken. Everybody thought the Eagles were dead in the water. Fire Nick Sirianni. Do this. Do that. Do that. Everybody and their dog had an opinion about the Philadelphia Eagles. Insert the bye week. The talk has kind of died down a little bit. Did that bye week get the get the chance of the Eagles to mend each other, build that trust? Maybe Nick Sirianni became a better coach. Maybe the defensive coordinator and offense coordinator are finally on the same 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 page. Maybe the team is kind of gelled in. Because if they do not win this win this weekend, if they do not win this weekend, the Jets have shown that the midseason firing season is now open. When the Jets fired Robert Sala, what, Tuesday, open season, time to fire coaches. Nick Sirianni is already on the hot seat. And everybody is saying that Jalen Hurts just doesn't have it anymore. The inner fighting is an issue. There's a lot of issues happening in Philadelphia. So, guys, I think the Philadelphia Eagles need this win the most. They need to come out and they get a nice statement win this weekend. And all might be right in Philly moving forward. 
So, guys, I asked a question and I proposed a question. Who do you guys think needs to win this weekend the most? Who do you guys think that needs to, like, really sit down and crunch and make a statement win? Make a statement win. John says the Saints are done without Derek Carr. And, John, I will confer with that. I will concur that I think the Saints without Derek Carr are not very good. I think the Saints right now are going to kind of be a struggling, sinking ship, maybe trying to maintain it, right? Now, I've seen reports where Derek Carr actually might be put on the IR, so he could be, he could miss up to four weeks. Now, the Saints do have a quarterback controversy that they could go with, right? Do they want to go with former, uh, what was that Netflix TV show called? Was it called QB1? Uh, Spencer Rattler, right? Many people, John, I, 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 I think you were one of them that – you guys were kind of high on Spencer Rattler. You thought that he could have a potentially really, really good NFL career. But then that Jake Henner guy came in, and he's a second-string quarterback, and he came in and replaced a Derek Carr, not Spencer Rattler. So if Jake Henner is the answer, I think the Saints are exactly right. I think they're done, and their season is going to be dead in the water as fast as it's, it's like it started to, to like go. But if Spencer Rattler comes in, makes a little bit of noise, they could have a shot. They could have a shot. Mark Lewis says, a statement game will be for the Washington Commanders and the Baltimore Ravens. Now, when I broke down, like when I was looking at games, looking at looking at teams, Mark, I was looking more toward like this team needs this win to save their season. This team needs to win to really catapult them into the second half of the season or into the second quarter of the season, right? They really need this staple to kind of start building that build, building block here. But, Mark, you might be exactly right. You might be right because right now the Washington Commanders are flying sky high. The Washington Commanders are won four games in a row. They've beaten the Giants. They've beaten the Bengals and the Cardinals and the Browns. Their only loss came to the Buccaneers opening week at Tampa Bay with a rookie quarterback and a head coach that hasn't coached for like five years as a head coach. Since then, they've rightened the shift. The offense is looking good. Hell, even the offense looked good even week one. The defense is starting to tone it up to do it well, and you're going against arguably one of the best teams in the NFL versus the Baltimore Ravens. So this game is at Baltimore. This is a 1 o'clock game. This should be the CBS game of the week. Should be like a primetime game, honestly. Too bad they 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 can't flex uh, week six games because who really wants to watch the Bills and Jets? But we digress from that. The point of the matter is, Mark, you are exactly right. If the Washington Commanders can go into Baltimore, not only compete with the Ravens, I'm talking a close game, battling back and forth, whatever, right? But go into Baltimore and beat them beat Lamar Jackson, beat Derrick Henry, beat this great defense that looks suspect at best last last week. I think there's a totally different tone around the Washington Commanders because truth be told, their four wins this season have been coming against teams that are meh. The Giants, meh. Many people said the Giants should have won that game. If they had a kicker, the Giants would have probably won that game. Probably right. The Bengals, they're not very good right now. The Cardinals, I deem that as a decent win. You went to Arizona and you put a 40-burger on them, right? Decent win. But then you beat the Browns. Cool, right? So really, the Washington Commanders really don't have that staple win yet this season. And if they could go into Baltimore and compete with the Ravens, it'd be like, okay, I am a buyer. I am a believer. However... On the opposite side of that coin, on the opposite side of that coin, let's say they do go into Baltimore and they get the brakes beat off of them. They get blown out. Many people are like, ah, y'all just pretenders, right? This, this is kind of a contender pretender game right here. We can talk about contender and pretender and Washington come, 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 commanders right now. You can come out of this game as a contender, compete with the Ravens, potentially beat the Ravens, 
or a pretender and get the total break speed off of you. So, Mark, you are right. This is definitely a statement game for the Washington Commanders. John says this is a, a statement game for the Chargers, and the Chargers are going to win this game. So the Chargers do play the Las Vegas Raiders on Sunday afternoon, right? They do play the Raiders. No, I'm sorry. Oh, man, who are the Ra- uh, Chargers play? Dang it. Dang it. I thought I had it pulled up. I guess I don't. Chargers play the Broncos. Yeah, so, so the Chargers play the Broncos. So let me pop that back up. So John says it's the Chargers that need to win this game. This is a statement week for the Chargers, says John. Now, the Chargers, the Chargers do travel to Broncos, to the Denver Broncos that have won three games in a row. And I have them in my top top seven here in the NFL Power Rankings. I actually forgot to post them. I, I, I like, I'll, like, I'll post them as soon as the show is over. But the Chargers right now are kind of, of a team that I really don't have a lot of faith in, right? They won versus the Raiders week one. They beat the Panthers week two, but then they lost to the Steelers and lost to the Chiefs. Already injuries are starting, already, already starting to add up for the Chargers. And if they lose three games in a row, losing the Steelers, Chiefs, 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 and Broncos, that puts them two games minimum behind in the division. And then they travel to, Car- uh, to Arizona, Saints, Browns, and Texas moving forward. So they can potentially get back on the right track. But... They 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 need to win, John, but I don't think this is a must-win situation. This is not a statement win for them. This is more a statement win for the Broncos if they can beat the Chargers, to, to be honest. Excuse me. Mark says, I get it, but the Eagles beat the Browns. It's kind of expected. But if Washington beats the Ravens, that's saying something serious. Exactly. Exactly, Mark. Beating the Ravens is kind of a, of a big deal. Despite their record, they're, they're what, 3-2 and two on the season, start off 0-2. Oh the Ravens are one of the best teams in the NFL. But they are. They are. James says teams are starting to, to get a book on what Washington and Daniels is doing, and it's going to start getting harder. This can definitely be a season-defining game for Washington. I mean, I got the, you know, the the more I think about it, the more I have this game circled, right? If this game is not on CBS at, at one o'clock, guys, we will be streaming it on our Discord. So if, if you are not a part of our disc, disc, Discord, be sure to click on the link below and get a part of the Discord. Because if you're going to want to watch this game, we are going to want to watch this game. So guys, that is the question of the like of the day. Who needs a win more this week? And I think that the Eagles need to win the most. This chair fucking sucks. I think the Eagles need to win the most, but to be a most defining win, a most dominant potential win is I guess I guess the commanders in a close second. You guys, you guys definitely nailed it. Mark, way to bring that up. But guys, it is a beautiful Wednesday here at Man Hour. And every Wednesday, we do a little thing called buy or sell. Buy or sell is very, very simple. I've been out scouring the old interwebs, doing the old trolling thing like I do every every morning right there on the pooper. Because, you know, that's that's where guys do the most thinking is, is a, like it's on the pooper and on the shower. And we're going to got three topics here. And we're going to buy them like, yeah, I like what you're saying. Give me some more of that. Buy, buy, buy or sell. Like, get that out of here. You are not right. I want it far away from me as I can. So, guys, in the comments below, be sure to play along. Buy or sell right here on NFL, Man Hour NFL Talk on this Wednesday edition. So, with that being said, the first buy or sell of the weekend, of the like of the day, is going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars. Guys, the Jacksonville Jaguars got their first win of the season last week in versus the Indianapolis Colts. It was a great back-and-forth game. Trevor Lawrence finally looked like a pretty decent quarterback. Tank Bisbee found the end zone a lot. and But now they have their next two games over the pond. Over there in Europe, the next two games, right? The Jaguars, guys, are 6-5 and five in Europe. They did win two games over their last season playing back-to-back games and the, and then this year they played back-to-back games as well, back-to-back games as well. So guys, the question is buy or sell. 
Is the NFL giving the Jaguars an unfair advantage by letting them play back-to-back weeks over in Europe year after year after year? Now, I want to start off by saying this, that I cannot stand out-of-country games. I don't care if it's Brazil. I don't care if it's London. I don't care if it's Mexico. I don't care if it's Canada. I do not like the out-of-country games. But I especially hate the London games. I hate the London games because of the whole eight-hour time difference, right? The, The time zone is horrible for the NFL teams that are only over there for one week. And we get bad NFL games. We, we, we do. We get bad NFL games. The, the Jaguars will, will now have played four games in Europe the last two seasons. Back-to-back weeks the last two years. The Jaguars normally excel in bad games. If you're going to get a nice, bad, grounded-out type of game, the Jaguars are a team that you want. Because let's just be honest, they're a bad football team. So, so with that being said, guys, buy or sell are the Jaguars getting an unfair advantage by the NFL by playing back-to-back overseas games. And I am buying this. I am buying this. Not only do the Jaguars play over the pond each and every season, it seems like the last like four, five, six years they have played over in London or Europe in general, but they play back-to-back games. Back-to-back games. So not only are they playing over the pond, have an eight-hour time difference, they're there for three weeks to acclimate, right? They're there for three weeks to acclimate. It is definitely 100% advantage. It is. Why is it an advantage? Well, because you don't have to travel over there twice, right? You travel over there once, you get there like on a Tuesday, you have all week to acclimate, you acclimate, you play the game, you have a whole, a whole, whole another week over there to chill and just kind of really like relax more or less. And then you play another game while your next opponent is traveling over there. And it's starting to be the norm that they play over there. And I think it's absolutely ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous that they consistently get to play over there. Guys, if if you are not buying this, you are a homer. You are a overlooker of the obvious. You are just like, really? I don't even think about it like that. So, guys, buy or sell. The, the, the NFL gives the Jaguars an unfair advantage by playing them overseas. James Shamo said this is a 100% way. A 100% way. Mark says the Jags are cooked this season. They haven't done anything impressive and spent too much time on a mediocre quarterback. However, Mark, however, Mark, last season, the Jacksonville Jaguars went over the seas and they played, I don't know who, they, like who they played first. And, and, the, and, the, and then they played the Buffalo Bills, right? So, They won both those games, and they ended up winning like six games in a row after that, right? They started off slow. They won a game before they they went over the pond, just like this year. Then they played two, won two over there, and and, and, and then they won three more in a row after that. So just because Trevor Lawrence is a mediocre quarterback, this gives him an edge, right? He wins when he goes over there. I don't know how he does it, but he consistently wins when he goes over there. Year after year, Trevor Lawrence comes out there with shining with like like with the polish poop shining like gold. I, I'm not for sure the same, but some of that, right? The point of the matter is, is they have an advantage. They have an advantage because last year when they beat the Buffalo Bills, everyone's like, oh, Jacksonville Jaguars are real deal. The Buffalo Bills suck. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, the Buffalo Bills did go on a downfall after like like after that. Fired their offensive coordinator, insert Joe Brady, bada bing, bada boom, to the moon. Jaguars won three more games in a row. Haven't won a game again, game since since last week. <laughs> so, James says, if you're not buying, you are a Jacksonville Jaguars fan. True, true. Mark says, to be honest, I don't think it will matter. They're just not a, that good of team. We discussed this before the season. We have discussed this. 
We discuss is that nauseum that they're just a bad team. Trevor Lawrence is not very good. But yet, here we are. We're talking about them because we're getting ready to win two games overseas yet again, go on a three-game winning streak, and all of a sudden they're like, oh, they're going to win the South. And then they're not going to not, and then they're not going to win a game till next next October. <laughs> and then we like, oh, okay. All right. Buy or sell. Do the NFL give the Jaguars a non an unfair bias by playing the back to back weeks overseas? I am buying it. I am buying it, buying it, buying it. So is everybody else. Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers are currently on a two-game losing streak. The Pittsburgh Steelers, guys, after starting off 3-0, have now dropped their last two games versus the Colts and the Cowboys. All signs right now is that Russ was going to make an appearance in the Raiders game and potentially start moving forward. So, guys, buy or sell. Russell Wilson will right the ship in Pittsburgh and lead them to the playoffs. Now, let's look at the wins for the Pittsburgh Steelers this season. In wins this season, Justin Fields has thrown for 156 yards versus the Falcons, 117 yards versus the Denver versus the Denver Broncos, and 245 yards versus the Chargers. In losses this season, he's thrown for 312 yards versus the Colts and 131 131 yards versus the Dallas Cowboys. Passing yards, no correlation. Quarterback play, no really no correlation, right? In wins this season, Najee Harris has rushed for 70 yards versus the Falcons, 69 <laughs> versus the Denver Broncos, and 70 yards versus the LA Chargers. In losses this season, he's rushed for 19 yards versus the Colts and 42 yards versus the Dallas Cowboys. In wins this season, the defense have ha- the, the, the defense has only given up 10 points to the Falcons, 6 points to the Broncos, and 10 points to the Chargers. And losses, 27 points to the Colts, 20 points to the Dallas Cowboys. So with all those stats, guys, all those numbers, everything coming at you, buy or sell, will Russell Wilson write the ship in Pittsburgh? Will he write it? Guys, I have to sell this. I have to sell this because the defense has been on the field a lot the last few weeks. And that's not because of Justin Fields' play. It's because of the lack of the rushing attack. 19 yards versus the Colts and 42 yards versus the, versus the Dallas Cowboys for Najee Harris. Not a good look. The offensive line needs to get better and tighten it up. It's simple as that. The wide receivers need to catch the ball and make plays when the ball hits them in their hands. George Pickens, always effing open, or sorry, open effing always, catch the ball. Changing quarterbacks will not fix the offensive line. Changing quarterbacks will 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 not let the receivers catch the ball. What the Pittsburgh Steelers need to do is get back to rushing the ball. They need to catch the easy passes and get back to rushing the ball. That will help them tremendously. So I have to sell this. Changing of quarterback will not change the for, uh, fortunes in Pittsburgh because we all know it, their their team was based off of a solid run, rushing attack and a solid defense. I've been saying it since June. All the Steelers need is average quarterback play. Don't suck, and they'll be a playoff-bound team, if not potentially winning the AFC North. Russell Wilson or Justin Fields, it doesn't matter. Stick with Justin Fields moving forward. He's been there. He led you to a 3-0 and start. He led you. So, guys, the question is, buy or sell? Will Russell Wilson right the ship in Pittsburgh and lead the Pittsburgh Steelers to the playoffs? James says ball control and defense is Steelers football. Putting Rush out there trying to throw the ball over the over and over is is a sell. You are correct, James, because when we look at the stats, passing attempts have no correlation on winning or losing football games. And wins. 156 yards versus the Falcons, 117 yards versus the, versus the Denver Broncos, and 245 versus the Chargers. And losses, 312 yards versus the Colts, 131 yards versus the Dallas Cowboys. It's almost like if the win the Steelers throw the ball more, they're losing. They're, they're going to lose. Going to lose. Mark says, not sure about Pittsburgh yet. I can't take a note on them. Yeah, to, to be honest, yes. 
the Pittsburgh Steelers we've we've seen, I guess, dominating. Not not now. We we we've seen them play well. Also seen them play pretty bad. They got dominated by the Dallas Cowboys just a, 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 like a, like a, like a, a week ago. Let's just be honest. So guys, buy or sell. Buy or sell. Will Russ save the Pittsburgh Steelers season? Next up. Next up, next up, next up. Deshaun Watson. That's right. The Deshaun Watson. After years of being drug out, the lawyers have finally stated that the final Deshaun Watson case has been resolved and now is over. AKA the final woman has been paid off to keep her mouth shut. Since Deshaun Watson has been starting quarterback in Cleveland, he has had 17 starts. In those starts, guys, he is 9-8. and eight. This record of 9-8 and eight for the Cleveland Browns has cost him $230 million guaranteed money, six draft picks, including three, dra- uh, three first-round draft picks as well. So far in five games this season, Deshaun Watson has the lowest QBR in the NFL, and that's at 21. 21 QBR, the lowest in the NFL for qualified quarterbacks. So, guys, buy or sell, since all this lawsuit, all this off-the-field stuff has been resolved, Deshaun Watson will finally come back to an MVP level. Buy or sell. Let's flash back, guys, to 2018. 2018 through 2020, Deshaun Watson was a Pro Bowl caliber quarterback. He made the Pro Bowl three three years in a row, 2018, 2019, 2020. 2020, he actually led the NFL in passing. That offseason, he did become the highest-paid quarterback in the NFL. He got those da da bills, yo. But since then, he's been traded to the Cleveland Browns. Since then, he was suspended for like a year and a half. And since then, he's only played 17 starts in this NFL in, in the in, a, in the NFL. And when we look at the Cleveland Browns right now, guys, they're just a bad team. But we talked about it earlier. One good win this weekend, or just a win in general, they could really start to right the ship. If when the Browns play the Eagles, and then they have the Bengals coming up as well. And if they win those two games and does and Deshaun Watson plays plays good, it can get contagious. A whole team can start to come together. Nick Chubb comes back. Amari Cooper starts starts performing, and the and then the and then Deshaun Watson starts leading the NFL in like in passing. It could happen. It could happen. So buy or sell. Now that the lawsuits are all over, Deshaun Watson will come back to his once MVP level. Guys, this is a sell. This is a sell. Deshaun Watson is all but done in Cleveland. Deshaun Watson has no faith in himself. The fans want him out. The coaches want him out. The media wants him out. The only reason why he has not been benched yet or cut is because of the $230 million. How about this? The $170 million dead cap hit if he were to get cut. This is a sell that Deshaun Watson will never become an MVP quarterback again. Not in Cleveland. He needs a new say in a change of scenery. He needs something. But in Cleveland, he is done. He should be cut. He should be benched. But the, let's just be honest, the Cleveland Browns simply cannot afford it. That is the only reason why he is still on the roster. Jameis Winston needs to be put in there. Deshaun Watson needs to be benched. I, I, got, I, 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 got, I don't know if he needs to get his clear his head, a new change of scenery, maybe a new office corner. I, 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 a guy, I don't know. The mojo is gone in Deshaun Watson. It just... For whatever reason, the funk is there and he can't get it out. Get the funk out. So, guys, buy or sell. Now that the lawsuits are all over, will Deshaun Watson return to his MVP level of play? James says Watson only signed to get the bag to pay those women off. Cleveland needs to tell him to kick rocks and move on. So, James, here is the problem. If, if the Cleveland Browns decide to cut Deshaun Watson. They have a $170 million dead cap hit next season. $170 million dead cap hit next season. The salary cap is only $225 million as is. So that only gives you like, what, $50 million 
to field a team for next season. You cannot do that. Nick Chubb alone is going to need $20 million to stay around. Amari Cooper is going to need another $19, $20 million. So that leaves you $10 million to field the rest of the 51 players on that team. Just not going to happen. Now, they could trade him. They could trade him to a team that has a lot of salary cap. They could trade him to a team like the Carolina Panthers that have like $250 million in salary cap. They're not paying nobody down there. They could be like, hey, we're going to cut Deshaun, but what if we trade him to you along with the first round draft pick and you send us, I don't know, Andy Dalton, <laughs> somebody, right? Just, just send us somebody to sweeten the pot. Then you can do whatever you want with with Deshaun w- w- Watson. Once Deshaun Watson gets traded, that that dead cap hit gets cut in half. So if the Carolina Panthers do not want Deshaun Watson, they can cut him only eighty million dollar cap hit. They're not going to be any good this year or next year. So why not take that de- take that dead cap hit and still get that first that get that first round pick as well. Now maybe. Carolina makes a trade for De, for Dush D Sean, and he has a resurrection like Sam Darnold does. Like, um, who's the other quarterback that's playing well right now? Kirk Cousins, right? Like, uh, maybe he just needs a new change of scenery, some new coaching, and bada bing, bada boom, pff, MVP level. It, it 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 could happen. It could happen. James says you're paying the money either way. Cut him and get out of the locker room. You can't cut him though. A hundred and seventy million dollars of dead cap of kept dead cap hit if you cut Deshaun Watson. If you cut him a hundred and seventy million dollars, you can't pay nobody. There's no fabricating that salary cap money. You you just can't do it. You you can trade him. That gets him off of your gets him off of your books. It's going to take probably a first round pick for a team to take him. So Deshaun Watson in a first 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 round pick, maybe you can swap first first round picks. I I got I don't know something something. James Frank, a resident Browns fan, says I read Miles Garrett might get traded to the Lions. I think it's just a rumor, but I'd be sick. You'd never trade Miles Garrett. James, if you saw that news from the NFC North news. On Twitter, that is a facetious um, Twitter handle. That guy just pulls up random shit out of the blue and just starts and just starts and basically just starts, 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 starts shit, right? Now, if I were the Cleveland Browns, I would be entertaining the idea of a complete rebuild. I would get Deshaun Watson out. I would see if, it, see if there's any tread on Nick, 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 Nick Chubb, and you can get a value pick out of him. The Dallas Cowboys need a running back. Send Nick Chubb down there. Miles Garrett is 30 years old, 29 years old, right? I think he was drafted in 2017. He should still have some tread left on the like on the tires, but if somebody's offering you a first round draft pick for him, yeah. I know it would make me sick too. And to be honest, the Cleveland Browns still have one of the best defenses on paper. They still have Devin Bush. They still have uh, Zadarius Smith, right? Uh, they still have Juan Thornhill. Granted, he is on on on, on IR. Greg Newsom's a dog. But if the Browns lose this, this weekend to the Eagles and get dominated like they have been, fire sale. Buy or sell. James says, I'm working, but had to check out the show real quick. Thank you, man. Definitely, definitely appreciate it. Kevin Cummings is in the chat says, what up? I'm late. F the Browns, F Stefani, and F Watson. So, guys, buy or sell. Now that all the lawyers are all done, all the lawsuits are done, the final woman has been paid off. Will Deshaun Watson return to his MVP level of play? I'm selling it. I'm selling it. I'm selling it. I'm selling it. No way, no way, Jose. 
But guys, that's going to be it for today's show. We had buy or sell. We talked about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Russ Wilson starting. Deshaun Watson come back to MVP level. Also talked about um, what was the first buy or sell? Oh, the Jaguars. Bias. Biased. Biased. But that's going to be it today, guys. Playoff week is among us here in the Indiana High School football. Got a lot on my plate. Until then, we'll see you guys tomorrow, 2.30 East Coast time, every Monday through Friday. Until then, we out.